it's one of my main jobs in 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 sessions with with the clients with the, to to do the same thing to um to help people to be loyal to themselves because this judgment uh, is always going back over the past and finding fault with what has been done by them you know what uh, the mind has this incredible tendency to look back at um, yesterday I had this young thing, 20 year old, that had planned to go to Thailand for four, week, four months and came back home after four weeks. And uh, actually in a very um, organized way, but as soon as she was home, uh, it was reinterpreted as a, as, a, as, a, as a mental breakdown, something that went horribly wrong. She hadn't done her what, what she was out there to do, which is enjoying herself for four months. And um, it, it uh, completely unsettled her and the whole family of what was to become of her if she was mentally so fragile. And, and, I, and, and I, I just, it's, it's such an example of how we find ourselves in a situation, we make very fitting, adequate decisions in our flow. She had to just come home and there's nothing wrong with that. It was done in a very organized way. No one was left hanging. Um, and, and it, so all that was fabulous. But afterwards, we start judging it as this or that. And it's always negative, of course. And it's the same thing as you just draw your line. And then the big question is, will, will mind kick in the I am and say, that's a bad line that is. Look at what you've done now. How stupid can you be? I wish that would have never happened. And we do that with our whole life. And it's just my, my forever my, my story that I say, can you be a bit more loyal to yourself and say, mm -hmm. I did what I needed to do then. How, I don't even have all the facts anymore. How can I say that that wasn't right? You know, I, I was only in that particular position then and I did my best and, and it has to be as it is. And can I find the good in it? Same thing. That's freedom. That is freedom. I think, I think what I would suggest from that is that there is, uh, there are, there's a method that helps with that. It gets back to this idea of skills, the, the skills that we learn. And the practice is the experience. It's not the thing. Mm. So the, the marks, the, the outcomes are not significant the thing that's significant is the skills as they're being performed oh, i think wow. that's i yes. think that's what it comes down to yeah because that's the experience the experience is not looking back on something and saying oh, i did that wrong because yeah. then concepts come in yeah. well it's they because they're kind <laughs> and restricting yeah, but, but also <laughs> it's because that that's not the experience yeah. that you, we we live in a we we live only in one moment we don't live in a film where we can go back and watch that piece again. Yeah. So watching part of our past life again and being judgmental about it is, yeah, I mean, I, you, I can see that's you just think, oh. <laughs> What's the point? What's the point in that? I only come back out. I come out badly. That I can guarantee. <laughs> yeah, but it's a, it's a sort of the experience I'm having now is, yes. is reflecting on the experience I had before. What have, what have I doing that for? And I, but I think one of the things that makes it easier for me is because I have such a bad memory. And I, well, I know it sounds silly. Well, it, it, it is. I, I mean, I, it is and it isn't. I mean, it, it's, it's very unhelpful in that I can't remember lots of things. Um, whereas lots of other, you know, if you've got a good memory, that's very handy because you can remember, you can hold lots of things in your head because you can remember lots of them. But if you, if you don't have a good memory for lots of things that have happened, um, it, it sort of helps in a different way. I know it, it does sound silly, but it, 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 it's sort of true. I mean, I, I really don't have a very good memory. So I spend 
I suppose I spend less time thinking about what might have happened. I spend a lot of time thinking about what might happen, but not what, what has happened. Well, just bringing up um, just an aside from that whole discussion about freedom and creativity. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, if you are asked to be creative, you are nearly always asked to select the media and that media automatically becomes a constraint, as you pointed out. Yeah. Yeah, well, absolutely. No, I'm, I, it's, I, I suppose it's the word, it's the word constraint. It's like all words. It depends on how you interpret it. And it's I'm saying- negativity in it, which isn't necessary. It's a yeah, given. It's, if it's you said a it was a circumstance. If you said it was a skill, if you said um, the medium that you use is a skill, rather than it being a constraint, then you'd you'd say, ah, yeah, well, I'm using I'm using an ability in order to be able to be creative. I think the other thing that I was thinking about in terms of this and how to think of it is Venn diagrams, because if you see constraints as the, the, the circles in a Venn diagram, and you say that if I'm working within those constraints, within this circle, then it doesn't allow you the possibility of being anywhere else other than inside the, the constraints of that, of that um, circle. So, and yet, some creativity does go beyond the, the, the parameters of what was there before. So that thinking about things like where you we sort of change the, um, you, you make paradigm shifts. So you, with Einstein's relativity, um, moving from a Newtonian mechanical view of the universe, he w had to work initially within the constraints of the Newtonian circle, but he ended up outside. So it's, it seems that, yes, there must be some sort of flexibility in the system where one, the constraints don't constrain you or, or can't always constrain you within a particular paradigm. Because otherwise, you'd never, we'd never move out of any paradigms. And the other thing I thought about was that a paradigm shift is very rare. You don't, it's, it's unusual to see the world in a completely different way. And small steps in creativity are sort of at the other end of the scale. So maybe it's not that there are, maybe it's just that there's a continuum in in. in in creativity. Maybe it's just that there are lots of different ways of being creative. And so that sometimes, yes, we can work within a very prescribed field and make small adjustments or small changes within that. And but also but within the same possibility, we can see things in a much broader perspective. But in order to do that, you have to have a very high level of, of skill, a very high level of understanding of the field that you're working in, and a flexibility to, to think beyond what you already know. Not think beyond it, but accept that things might happen. Uh, have you ever thought about uh, the human species as a creative project, given that we've got cultural um, evolution going on? whether we like it or not. Um, the very fact that we're talking about it is evidence of that, I guess. Um, but, you know, I, I've had this thought for, for a while that, uh, that there, there is a, the human project is one of, you know, ostensibly one of progression and it's always changing, of course. It's always pushing the boundaries of um, of, of knowledge. Of, of um, you know, in some ways, I've, I've, I've sometimes thought that uh, what motivates humans is the the need or the the um, 
Well, perhaps the, uh, the people just want to create God. You know, like <laughs> the, the whole, yeah, I'm quite, quite serious. <laughs> the, 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 the entire sort of scientific project is, is basically trying to work it all out and create God. Like, if there's no need to, to sort of get into debates of whether God exists or not. It's irrelevant. We're trying to create God. Um, <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> so, so this is this is one. Uh, this is sort of one thing that I see as you know, the, hu the human project. Uh, whether it stands up or not, I don't know. But uh, I've often thought about that. Well, Heidegger says in the, the way that it happens. I just throw that in, as I understand it, is that um, th th there is. There is forever change in the human project. That's what philosophy is trying to describe. And uh, the way that the changes happen is uh, kind of incremental, but sufficiently jumpy so that it is seen as something new. But it is marginal practices which are suddenly in the center of things. That's what he says in his essay about art. So. Uh, in your Venn diagram, uh, the most, most people would be kind of centering in that bubble, in, uh, but uh, a few people will go to the margin of, of that and uh, suddenly start uh, really putting that into their center. And so then a, a new, a new that's the new center. So it, the, the Venn diagram just either moves over into making that the new center, or at least gets bigger. So it's it's mm -hmm. a marginal practice, which suddenly gets into the center. And then of course that will have a marginal practice again. So in the end, you can end up somewhere with your, with your Venn diagram, you can end up somewhere quite different from where you started out by just moving sideways all the time or you know, in one mm. or the other direction. Well, this That's is part of the process part of the process of accumulative uh, cultural evolution uh, you know, with this constant uh, 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 hitting the boundaries of what is known and what is not known. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, so we and like a boundary a, you know, and resonating with it then, don't we? We do, mm -hmm. we do like to go to the edge yeah. and fiddle with it. Uh, so, yes. yeah. <laughs> and push it and see if it breaks. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And sometimes it gives. Yes. One of the things that I, I keep thinking about, it keeps coming back, is this, um, the difference between the noun and the verb, the difference between the thing and the process. And so if we're, because we, we talk about the cultural and cultural effects and think as, as, as they are things they are um, stuff that we can recognize and that we we can learn about and we can see the evidence of but there's also not but but and there's the process of the of doing it and I'm not sure that the process of doing it is for it's a it's it is for an aim i think often often it is for an aim but often it isn't for an aim so for instance if um we take uh francis bacon a uh, uh, painter mid 20th century british painter he painted but didn't know what it was that he was going to come up with paintings emerged as he was painting so there wasn't a, a f an aim there wasn't an aim in order to create let's say a portrait i'm going to make a picture of somebody and it's going to look like them in the end which you could say was an aim of creating a thing he was just creating he was just doing stuff as it happened and at the end of it he sort of had to make a decision as to when the end had arrived. And it's sort of, well, okay, now I don't know that I can do much more. Therefore, that's the end. 
whereas if you were doing a portrait you'd get to it and write well i've done both eyes i've done that right now all that and i'll put the varnish on right now that's finished so i have produced something and i think that again i'm not sure that there is a there's a big division between them because i think the process is similar but there is something about the having an aim which maybe is that's the thing that 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 adds those constraints and, and one of the things you wrote Gary was about deadlines and you know in a way yes working to deadlines can be a motivator but also it it can be a destroyer because how could have how could well he couldn't I mean Francis Bacon could not have worked to deadlines or he could have worked to them but he certainly wouldn't have done what he did because he didn't but he didn't have to work to deadlines so i just think there is something about that there's the difference between the things and the process well the thing is just that it's just a thing it's not part of the culture knowing how to do it or or having done it is is i guess it can feed back into the culture and be and potentially be further evolved so it's the knowledge that's perhaps more important, the knowledge of the process that's possibly more important than the thing, or I would say almost certainly more important than the actual thing that you've actually created. I wonder if it is more, I mean, that the thing and the process, I know, I think what you're talking about, and for, for me, it's, it's, you can still be under, misunderstood for, because for me, it is like, doing and the doer and more it's more i think more subject uh, related uh, what makes the process a true process if it just does itself if if things happen in like when we are in flow there's no one doing it there's just the doing and we love that state and we love watching that state like in sports people who are in flow we are we are, we are glued to 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 it and it's it's, a, it's a, a lovely thing and and artists can be in the same state and and we often live our life just in flow we, there's no i there's no doer there's just the doing and it's lovely um so the process i would say is this doing without the doer and the thing is the doer naming it something which is great for talking about stuff but it is uh, always slightly misleading because the thing is is not where it really happens it's just something that we can describe and and we use as a tool but but the the doing is something different from that, so for me, it, it, in the thing and the process, I, it's, it is it, um, but my, that might be at times, not every process has that kind of doing without the doer implicitly in it. And a lot of processes, like the word is used nowadays in manufacturing, um, it, it's very there's there's uh, all sorts of subjects involved and it's very deliberate and it has nothing to do with that flow so i i know when you talk about process this is not what you mean it's this kind of inflow doing that you're describing am i right there is that's certainly part of it i think that i'm not sure that that is always necessarily creative the 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 flow it can it can be but it, it can also be flow within quite strict parameters which restrict maybe some of the creative possibilities so for instance if you're a, a sports person you you and in flow you can be creative but you have to be creative within the parameters. You can't break the rules and the rules are quite strict. So 
that it means that you work within this. So it's a bit like the, um, what's his name? The web, the, 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 the rugby player, the first rugby player who picked up the ball instead of kicking it because football, so he, he picks up the ball and he runs with it. And that's a sort of the, the iconic um, uh, thing in rugby. They even call the, the World Cup after him. <laughs> I can't remember his name. It's Webb something or, or something Webb. And, and, and he broke the rules because he did something else. I didn't else, but... know that. He was cool. They were playing football. He picked up the ball and ran with it. And you sort of think, well, that's crazy because that's breaking the rules. But on the other hand, yes, they created another game. So we had to do something with beyond the rules in order to create something else. And that's not really the same as flow, whereas flow is you are you're working within a particular field. You're, you're working within parameters. You're working within that Venn diagram. And within that, that, that circle in the Venn diagram. And I think what I'm saying is that it's possible to, th there are instances where, where, you, where you're on the, whether it's the boundary or whether the boundaries become blurred and you are able to see beyond those constraints. And that's something that you might be in flow doing it but I'm, I think it's something else. It's not, uh, it's to do with vision. Um, a vision, being able to see beyond the, the current uh, parameters. Yes, but, but you could uh, say that some creativity is crashing through those parameters. Yes, uh, well, I, th I think that's what I am saying. I think that's mm. that's exactly what I'm saying. I think, but in order to do that, it's the you have to have something, and that that's why I think the word freedom was was quite interesting. Is that 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 it's the freedom to go beyond those parameters, which allows you to crash through the barriers. See, that's what I mean. I my my hunch is that you don't crash through the barriers there is no one when we are when when we crash there is crashing there is as soon as the eye comes in you know someone crashes through then they don't because that identity keeps you in the boundaries and that's why what i mean with uh, what i try to express with flow is this non-subjectivity you know that it just happens that guy didn't say you know what i pick up the ball and run with it and then see what will you do no picking up happened in his flow and skillfulness that just happened. No matter how he explains it afterwards, there's probably an eye involved suddenly. But in the event, I just would no. I, I agree. That I agree with you. There is no eye. So I think that absolutely. is the flow. I think yeah. no. I, 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 all I'm disagreeing with is that the, the, the term flow means something. Well, it means something to me, which is, which is, which is less than. Um, the ability to go beyond that, but I do I agree entirely that it's it's to do with non subjectivity, non dualism. Absolutely, it's just I think it's just a, it's a, it's it's terminology. I for me, flow means that you are yes without um, a sense of uh, I, but you're working within constraints, like the footballer playing football, being creative within that within those rules. But, but that's the, a paradigm shift. Yes, exactly. That's the, what the paradigm shift comes from. Mm -hmm. it's, it's still, you're not being you, you're not being an I, you're not having a, 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 a dual me and it. It's, that's still there. It's the, what happens though, is not, what I would term flow, it's something beyond that. It's something different, from, not beyond, but different. 
because flows sort of suggest that I am, I am in there doing this. I am there within what I can do. And somebody, and yet it's possible to do things beyond what you can do. How is that possible? Well, it's, it's, it's the, the only possibility, but yeah, <laughs> Gary, no, yeah. <laughs> is, is, is the outcome of our creativity some artifact or not? Well, I, 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 that's what I think is this problem of, of well, that's a problem. The, the thing about things as being nouns, as being outcomes, and then they experience. And most of the time, not always, but we tend to consider creativity as a process towards an aim. And that aim allows for progress or something, maybe. But what I'm interested in, I think, more is that a sort of more universal creativity, which is not necessarily adding to the world, adding to the things in the world, making things or changing things, but is a process in its own self. And it is, that's the process which I think is probably more universally useful. Why, for instance, and I, the, I, <laughs> I used to be a, well, before I was a lecturer in design, I was a lecturer in design education. And uh, so I was teaching teachers of, of, of um, a subject called design technology. And when it was first set up, it was set up and the rules were devised primarily by engineers because they saw this as a subject where you could train uh, potential engineers, uh, potential technologists of the future. And I said that for me, the important thing was not just the skills, but, but you should be teaching creativity. You should be allowing flexibility which means that you don't work within the constraints. You can't always work within the constraints of a skill set or with the aim of teaching people to be uh, knowledgeable and being able to just follow processes. Because if you do that, you're constraining the possibilities. And, and I lost the argument and the syllabus and the, the, the um, various different um, uh, exam boards and so on, the examinations came out and they were very much more um, outcome orientated. And in a way, you can see how that has to happen in, in a school environment because schools are judged by outcomes and those outcomes have to be measured and it's difficult to measure creativity. So, you, so not only is the, um, uh, the, the the structure limited by um, the by things like creativity by, by how do i how can i mark it how can i judge it how can i know whether this school has been successful because i can't how do i assess that so that's one of the constraints and the other one was this sort of well, well that's not what we need we don't need th that type of person what we need is what this country needs is um, more people who are going to be able to con make things and therefore and make us a richer country and also provide them with careers so from pre pre parental a parental perspective uh, there's pressure on that because they you know you want your children to to have a have a career uh, which is going to earn them money so it's difficult um under our system to encourage that type of open-ended creative thought processes because we are so constrained by thinginess, by the things that we, we, that we want, that we need or we per perceive. And that creativity then tends to be only useful or only perceived to be useful if it's related to measurable outcomes. And what I would maintain is that it is inherently useful even though it might not 
be culturally useful or economically useful or measurable or indeed measurable i mean i can sort of see the point of um um you know schools teaching the rules and uh, i mean i, I think well, you probably know this yourself, but you know, you know you've got to learn the rules in, in order to know which ones to break. Um, so you know, the, the function of a school is is not really not really creative. It's it's more you know knowledge based. So you know creativity you know, happens perhaps outside the school. You know, that, that's where. Um, Creativity can kick in because it's you know there's, there's nothing that has to be measured, um, you know it, it's it's free from those sorts of um, um, constraints of, of uh, measurability. Well, um, it, indeed, that's the way it works. I would, but I might say I maintain, <laughs> I still still think yeah. that that's not that's not necessarily <laughs> what schools are for, and yes. Uh, skills and knowledge are useful but um, they're not the necessarily the uh, the only things that schools should try and teach I it, I think general it, it's like playtime when when we when we were very young we spend lots of time having playtime and playtime as your school career progresses gets less and and in the end there aren't you don't have you have breaks you don't you sort of you don't have playtime anymore and so it's play i think which is um one of if not the most important aspects in our lives and that by taking away play by replacing it with uh, knowledge, skills, we are creating unnecessarily unnecessary constraints on uh, human development. But not on industrial development. Oh, certainly not on industrial development. development. Certainly and, not. And, From and, our and cultural and perspective, no, we don't want people playing. But uh, it actually, but now, of course, the, the whole thing is shifting. You know, if you go to, well, you know, these big conglomerates where Google and the, the like, um, they, that's what's encouraged. You have you know, areas where people can play and that you are encouraged to develop um, and go beyond. And you don't have to wear a suit and a tie and, and you have breakout areas. You have places where you can um, just relax, play instruments and so on in order to allow the levels, the levels of stimulation. So I think it was a constraint. It was seen as a constraint, and it still is in a, in education. But it's a. I still maintain it's a mistake. Um, not if you really want industrial progress. If you really want to do interesting things, then you should allow people more flexibility, more playtime, and have less um, stats. Have less standard assessment testing. Um, but schools, were, schools weren't set up for that, surely. Uh, I'm not sure school, but schools... It, it's, it sort of depends, doesn't it, on what you, what you mean by school. And, and our, right. our, our type of school, no. Our, what we're used to thinking of as a school. But again, it's a label. If you think of going back to sort of hunter-gatherers, you'd say, well, they didn't have schools. But does that mean they didn't have education? Well, of course they had education because they were teaching mm -hmm. skills, they were teaching knowledge, they were teaching understanding all of the time as it, people, because otherwise they're, 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 their system would have broken down. You wouldn't have known how to go and catch things, how to grow things, how to trap things. You would have all died. So obviously the education, but it, it doesn't have to be within the structure of the school as we see that thing. A school for education could be something different to the way that we perceive it when we say a word. It's this well, label. Is it, 
is it is it is it possible that it is in the, what you described there that creativity can't be taught as a subject because it is more like an attitude like if you could have the same school and um, uh, teach um, um, trigonometry but you could in all um, subjects have an appreciation of a creative approach and yes. that would make all the difference you could say uh, in history, you know, as you learn all the facts about the different Henrys and all that. But you could, when when any student comes up with a, a a slightly quirky way of looking at that, you could really appreciate that, and and so it would be an attitude of a fresh look at uh, in in the way these facts are made into a story or whatever, Absolutely. and actually. Uh, so this attitude of appreciation, a novel look, so would act in, in principle could flow really well with the skills and facts. It's just not done. You know, it, 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 the opposite's happening. No, there's only one way of looking at it, and it's my way, and uh, the, the textbook's way, and uh, uh, any novel way of looking at it is positively discouraged. But it 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 could make a very good. Uh, combination because the creativity is an appreciation of an attitude really uh, rather than a fact isn't it absolutely you're absolutely right and and that that is the way in fact that sort of in the 60s and early 70s a, quite a lot of education was going what happened in England Britain anyway was that um, we had the national curriculum which meant that you had to have standard uh, assessment, which meant that you had to have standard teaching. Because if all of those things that you're saying are right, they're just difficult to measure. They're difficult to assess as uh, nationally. You, you know, so you have somebody here who is looking at an history in an interesting way, in a different way, and they have, they are making the teacher maybe evaluate oh that's interesting yeah, i hadn't thought about that and look at it from those point of views that's interesting but how do i say that that is um comparable to how somebody in another school in another classroom has come up with another idea you can't it's very difficult to measure and if you can't measure it then you can't have standard assessment tests because that's what they are so that's why sats are such a problem because they say that we have to have standard assessment and we have to have testing systems that, that are universal or universal within the, within the um, country. So that we can say that somebody in Southampton is the same as somebody in Newcastle because they, they have reached the same level. And that's much more difficult to do in creativity it's maybe not impossible but it's certainly if much more difficult and it's it, if anything is difficult and there's not a lot of resources for it it's not going to happen so uh, but i would also going back to one thing you said was that can we teach and i think you can you can give maybe not teach creativity but you can certainly create a environment where creativity will flourish yeah I think that is possible. And that gets back to what, well, no, that's what Stephen was saying about human flourishing coming through creativity. That's a nice circle. Yes, it is. And they might be, you know, they are very connected, aren't they? Because in that creativity, there's interest rather than judgment. Yeah. And, and that's the only way to human flourishing, is finding, having the skill to find things. You know, I'm, I'm closing my circle here when I work with my people, because if they can find what they did in the past interesting rather than bad, they have made that big step. Mm. And, and that is the way to flourishing. If I can be at peace with what I did in my past, and, um, and, and that is that kind of um, a game changer. It's a big thing for people. Oh, yeah. I can see that. 
Yeah. Can we... Part of my point uh, previously, oh, sorry. You're Elfie? Yeah. Oh, uh, I, I guess um, one of my, um, I guess one of my points was that, uh, I mean, schools are not set up for human flourishing. They're set up <laughs> to serve the needs of, of uh, you know, economic and, and uh, various power interests within a society. Uh, and so, you know, but, but yeah, but moving on from that, that this whole area of uh, critical thinking, I mean, you don't, you can't really teach creativity. Some people say you can, but, but you can teach to some degree, to some people, critical thinking. And uh, with a critical mind, and, and I'm not talking negatively, of course, I'm talking about, you know, looking at things and not just accepting things at face value. Um, you know, with, with some skills and critical thinking, you can be creative. And I know that, I actually know a few critical uh, thinking teachers, so I'm, it apparently can be taught. I'm not exactly sure what's in these courses, but uh, and I'm not sure that you know students get any benefit from it really, or, or that perhaps a lot of students aren't really interested in being critical. Um, so there's only a small percentage of people I think who, you know, are, you know by nature, you know, critical thinkers, um, and of course there's quite a few others that can be taught those things, but there's probably quite a lot that really just aren't interested in, in uh, questioning what's put in front of them. Yeah, I, th I think you're right. <laughs> mm. Okay, right. Darlings, well, thank you. Thank you, thank well. you for yeah. our inspiration. Bye-bye. 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 <laughs>